Hi friends, I'm Chelsea and I'm here with my February reading wrap up. So I thought it would be fun to have some mood lighting and just kind of a cozy atmosphere. I have my decaf chai tea again and in my comfy PJs and I will just tell you about the books I read in February. So I read seven books and I'm happy to report that all of them were on my TBR except for one. And I didn't finish my February TBR, but I did read seven out of the ten. So I'd say pretty successful for my first attempt at an official TBR. And I really had a lot of books that I really enjoyed. I read a wide range of genres and it was a pretty good month. I read a memoir. I read a classic, a contemporary YA, two magical realism type books and a fantasy, romanticy, and a mystery thriller. So yeah, almost seven different genres there. So like I said, wide range. I'm gonna take a sip of my tea and then tell you about the books. Also, I have this fancy little reader's journal that my mom got me and I'm kind of obsessed with it. I've always been kind of a digital tracker, like using Goodreads and stuff, but um, she got me this really pretty journal and I've been writing in it and keeping track of books and stuff and it's cute I don't know if you can see it has like really pretty graphics of different books and it has some fun categories so I will be using this to kind of refresh my memory because let's be real I kind of forget the plots and my feelings on books like pretty soon after if I don't write them down and even then it's kind of iffy so having this will be really helpful to jog my memory. I started February kind of in like a bit of a slump because I finished January with two like almost five star books. One was five stars and one was like 4.75 so I was kind of like not sure where to go from there. I started listening to a couple different audiobooks and none of them really caught my attention and I was just like not focused and not feeling it. So it was kind of a rough start to the month, but then I picked up a memoir and that kind of got me out of the slump. So pro tip, if you're feeling a reading slump, listen to a memoir and maybe it'll help get you out of it. So yeah, I started the month with We Were Dreamers, an immigrant superhero origin story by Simu Liu. So if you don't recognize the name, he is Shang-Chi, the Marvel superhero and he was in Kim's Convenience and a couple other things. I mean, I listened to the memoir, so I should know, but those are the main two like notable things. And I really liked Kim's Convenience and Shang-Chi. And so I had his memoir on my list and I've also just been getting into memoirs lately. So he narrated the audiobook, which I always love. And basically, yeah, it's just the story of his life, how he was born in China and he mostly lived with his grandparents because his parents had gone off to work and go to school. He grew up there, but then when he was, I can't remember what age, but like not very old, his parents came back and they moved to Canada. And so he started like a whole different life and just like complete culture shock. And also like not having lived with his parents, it felt like he was moving across the world with like strangers. And they had a really tough relationship. Like his parents were really hard on him. And honestly, like from what he said, it sounded like they were pretty abusive. And so he was really honest about like what their relationship was like and his experience with them growing up. And so yeah, he kind of just talks about his early childhood and then as he got older, like school and then his career and all the things that kind of led him to make it big with Shang-Chi and Kim's Convenience and all that. And yeah, I felt like it was a really just like inspiring story. Like he just never gave up and he had a lot of things kind of stacked against him, like being an immigrant and Asian American living in Canada and just not really having like a lot of opportunities. Like he had to really work hard to like get his name out there. Some of the topics in this book, like I said, it, it talked about his family history, his career path, his really complicated relationship with his parents, but also then the importance of doing what you love, the difficulties of making it as an actor, and of course like racial pre pre prejudices, that's hard to say, racial prejudice against Asian Americans. And yeah, so it was just really like straightforward, honest writing, but it also was really like funny and witty and I loved his narration. Like you could tell he really just like put his heart and soul into it and he even got emotional at times, which is always like 
more impactful, I think. Super honest, and I think, yeah, he's just really like hardworking and seems really genuine. So I really enjoyed it, and I am gonna leave you with a quote of one of the sections in this reading journal is like a quote, so I think it'd be fun to like share one quote from each book. So here is one quote from the book. And he's talking about when he made it into um, the Marvel world with Shang-Chi. So, on that day, I became more than just a comic book character. I became a part of an idea that everyone deserves to see themselves as superheroes, as the leads of their own stories, or simply just as multifaceted beings with hopes and aspirations and flaws. So yeah, I highly recommend We Were Dreamers. It was a good time. Okay, so next up, I read The Wishing Game, or I should say I DNF'd The Wishing Game which I know this is a book that's loved by a lot of people. It's been really hyped up, which is why I picked it up because I've seen it all over the place. And this was my library book prompt from my TBR. Unfortunately, I DNF'd it at 25%. So I have not DNF'd a lot of books. I feel like I get like really attached and I feel bad if I like don't read a book, even if I could not care less. But with this one, I just was not feeling it and did not want to waste my time. If you love this book then I'm happy for you and I don't want this to like affect your thoughts on it but I wasn't feeling it. This one is about a girl named Lucy. Yeah Lucy. I honestly forgot her name. Sorry. So she is a teacher's aide and she is not really in a great place like financially and just in her life. She has this student named Christopher and he's an orphan and she like really wants to adopt him and then at the same time she learns that her favorite author when she was a child he like is hosting this contest on what's called clock island and basically whoever enters the contest will make it big and win his new book and something like that i honestly don't remember basically she's like okay maybe this is my chance to like make it and get some money and i can adopt christopher it's been compared to like willy wonka like how it's like a contest and like all these people are competing and it's kind of like the whimsical vibes and I did like the concept and like the setting and it did feel very whimsical and like quirky and I was kind of intrigued by the contest. I never made it to that point so who knows but yeah the writing I didn't love it. It felt kind of like YA but like dealing with heavier topics and it just I just didn't connect with it I guess. Lucy I felt like her relationship with Christopher just felt kind of inappropriate like she was talking to him about like I wish I could be your mom and like I'm basically your mom and we're gonna try to figure it out. To me it's like she's getting his hopes up. It just felt weird. Obviously like adoption and like fostering and all that is such a big important topic but to me this didn't feel like the way to like deal with it and it just felt kind of like cringy to me honestly so sorry if you love the book i just wasn't feeling it so i only made it 25 percent through then i moved on so next up i read persuasion here's my beautiful jane austen book i'm just gonna see how many times i can show you this i'm gonna try to do it every video so we're off to a good start so yeah persuasion by jane austen this was my book club choice and this also was the flowers on the cover prompt from my TBR and also under 200 pages. And I did start out reading it and then I switched to audiobook because I was reading it so slowly and had a time crunch with book club. And I really enjoyed the audiobook. I thought the narrator did a good job. Like I said in my last video or last couple videos, I love Jane Austen. Like Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, Emma, like all of those are so great. Persuasion was not my favorite. I don't know. It's still good. I think I gave it like a 3.5 and there were some really good themes, but it was not my favorite of hers. And it felt like, I mean, a lot of the typical Jane Austen elements like high society, family drama, love story, pining, and good morals and themes. And it had all those elements, but to me, it felt like a lot more of the drama and like high society stuff and like the love story did not really come into play till like the very end of the book. And I think I was hoping for more romance and like interaction with the two main characters. So basically it's about Anne Elliot. She's the main character. She and Frederick Wentworth were engaged a long time ago and she was persuaded by this authority figure in her life not to marry him because of like status and you know all the reasons and so she listened and they broke it off and he went off to the navy she did her own thing and then years later he comes back and they kind of like get back into each other's lives but 
they're kind of like not communicating but in the same circles in each other's presence but not getting together a lot of the book just kind of felt like just a lot of family drama a lot of avoidance and I was just hoping for more romance and at the end I loved it like I loved their interactions I loved their rapport and how things ended if you read this Wentworth's letter at the end is just like one of the best love professions. Um, I'll read a little short quote from that. I did like her family. They were kind of ridiculous. It felt very like satire, like kind of like demonstrate these themes of like high society and how it can be dangerous to like judge someone based on their social status and what the effects of like being persuaded have on you and it also de dealt with like some gender inequality issues which for this book being like as old as it is, I feel like there's a lot of really good themes in it. And so there were some good things. It just wasn't my favorite of hers that I've read. And I really had to like try harder to focus because I hadn't read a classic in a while. And that's just, that's a me problem. That's all the romanticy I've been reading. So <laughs> this is just a short little excerpt from Wentworth's love letter at the end of the book. Classic Jane Austen right here. You pierce my soul. I am half agony, half hope. I have loved none but you. And it's really long, but I just love that and it was very romantic at the end so that's persuasion y'all you're gonna be excited about this one i did it i finally did it crescent city house of earth and blood yes i got that right i made it through all 800 pages which again mostly audiobook i did read some physically but then i switched to audiobook and this was my series prompt for my tbr and i was so scared because yeah, and I really loved the Akatar series, so I was like not sure how this would compare, and I really loved this. I gave it a 4.5. There were just a couple small things that I didn't love, but I really liked it, and I am planning to continue the series, and I was really pleasantly surprised. Like, it was not as hard to get into as expected. There is a lot of world building. It didn't feel as much of a learning curve, and I really was like intrigued and interested right away. So basically, if you don't know, the premise of this is it's about Bryce, who is half human, half fae, and she's just kind of going about her life. She's a party girl. SJM really lets you know that, which kind of got on my nerves, but she's a normal girl, and all of a sudden her friends get murdered, and so she's kind of like in the middle of this investigation now, and then at the same time, Hunt Athelar, who is a fallen angel, he started this like Archangel Rebellion, so he's like a slave now to the Republic, and he gets put on the case. He's like working with Bryce to solve this murder, and of course they get thrown together. There's a lot of sparks flying. They just are trying to solve this whole murder mystery of her friends, and a lot of things just kind of get uncovered throughout the 800 pages of the book and it's like an urban fantasy setting which I love all the fantastical magical creatures you can imagine but with phones laptops modern day I love that so if you have other like similar style books or like just urban fantasy recommendations just let me know because I would love to read more so it does have like a ton of characters and like political elements so you really do have to Kind of keep up with what's happening but the political elements were interesting like there's a lot of like rebellion revolution political empires domination like all that along with the fantastical murder mystery so i really loved all of that like there's a lot going on the ending was crazy i could not stop listening in like the last little bit of the book really the main complaint for me i didn't feel super invested in bryce and hunt's relationship I think coming off of Akatar, Reese, and Farah, I was obviously trying not to compare, but I was a little bit. And so I didn't feel super connected to them. And then there were like some things that happened that I didn't love. They did like keep some big secrets from each other that you kind of find out later on. And then they kind of just like moved on, like nothing happened. I was like, okay, that's not the healthiest. Also, yeah, the thing about Bryce being a party girl, I'm like, I get it. We don't have to keep emphasizing that. I did like their banter though, like Bryce and Hunt, they're super witty and sarcastic. I love the themes of like friendship and loyalty. Here's a quote that I'm going to leave you with. Here's two quotes actually. Through love, all is possible. That's a quick, that's a quick quote. Okay, here's the one. If you read this, you'll know it's devastating. My friends are with me and I am not afraid. Yeah, I can't even talk about it. And the last one, I'm scared. That's the point of it, Bryce, of life. To live, to love, knowing that it might all vanish tomorrow. It makes everything that much more precious. So yeah, 
I loved Crescent City and I'm excited to continue the series. Okay, tea break. If you're drinking something, please drink with me. Three more books, y'all. We're getting there. Okay, so the next one I read was The Unmaking of June Farrow. I actually read this. Wow. This is the only full book I read in February. So yeah, that's where we're at. This was a book club pick as well. And also this was husband picked my book because he bought it for me. So yeah, June Farrow. I need to make sure you can actually see this because of the lighting. So sorry if you can't see the books very well. But this one is like magical realism, time travel, kind of fantasy-ish, but and then like historical elements too with the time travel. So yeah, this is the second book I've read by Adrian Young. I read Spells for Forgetting and I really loved it. And I also really love this. One of my favorites from the month. Um, and basically it's about a girl named June. She's in Jasper, North Carolina, which is not a real place, but it's based off of Western North Carolina, which is where I live. So I really loved that element of it. And she basically has a history of like all the women in her family have these weird things that happen. Like they kind of lose their minds a little bit and there's like this curse and she's trying to figure out, she doesn't know any details of it, but she knows that it's happening to her and she's trying to like make it not happen. And also her mother disappeared when she was young, kind of like left her. And so she's trying to figure out like what happened with that and what is happening with her and just, yeah, there's a lot of mystery and confusion. And then one day this door pops up out of nowhere and she's like, I don't know what this is, but I like have to go through it. And she goes through it and it takes her back in time. Yeah, she's trying to figure out this mystery of like her family and all the women and her mother. There's a murder mystery element. She's just trying to figure it out. And I'm not gonna really say much more after that because it would be spoilery, but I really like this. I'm going to put it down so I can look at my reading journal. First of all, something about Adrienne Young's writing that I really appreciate. It's just really like beautiful and atmospheric. Instantly, I could picture the scene. It's very like rustic, small town. I was there with June and I can picture all of it. And it really drew me in, but also had a very like eerie, uneasy, confusing feel like with the murder mystery and just June like not knowing anything. I also love the strong women in her family and like the familial themes and ties. Like, There's a little romance, which I liked, and I felt really attached to just all the characters really. So a couple of things I didn't like, well not didn't like, but bumped it down from a five star for me, I guess. The time travel elements, which I do enjoy time travel, but to me this was too complex. Like I'm still trying to figure out how it all worked and I just cannot put it together. Like almost I feel like I'm missing like one piece it was very complex and the whole time I was just like what is happening it just kind of blew my mind like a little too much <laughs> and yeah there's like multiple timelines you're kind of like jumping back and forth a lot and it feels like you have to like draw a line of like where she is on the timeline and so that was just a little confusing to me and then also like the pacing felt a little slow in the middle there were times where i just was kind of bored a little bit i talked about the beautiful writing and this like the picture painting but there were times where i was like all right i don't really care about the farm right now like let's just get to the murder mystery <laughs> and so it was a little slow but i will say the beginning and the ending they like hooked me a lot it's definitely not like a super fast-paced plot driven book like there is plot but it's more about the feeling and the atmosphere that was really it otherwise like i really enjoyed it i'd recommend it and especially if you love like kind of magical realism time travel with like atmospheric picturesque settings small town rustic kind of feel some romance and all that okay Two more books. This was my only five star of the month and my favorite book I read, The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I listened to it. This was not a prompt. I just wanted to read it for Black History Month and it's also just been on my TBR forever. And this one is YA contemporary. So it's about a character named Star and she's 16 years old and she lives in kind of like a poor neighborhood but she goes to like a rich white school. So she's like kind of caught between two worlds and basically early on she is with her friend Khalil and they get pulled over by a police officer and he is unarmed but the police officer shoots and kills him and so 
from there she's in the middle of the investigation because she's the only witness and like all this racial tension and she's just trying to figure out like her identity her voice her thoughts on like racial social issues it's definitely a heavy read and it's inspired by the black lives matter movement and yeah this is just like really powerful heartbreaking and at the same time it was really funny in moments and also just like super real i was just like on the edge of my seat the whole time and like feeling like all the emotions and i mean this felt like could have been a real story like if you told me this was a biography or memoir of something that happened i would 100 percent believe you like it felt just so real and true to life sadly it just really demonstrated like the issues of racism systemic injustice i feel like everyone should read this book like it's just so poignant really points out a lot of the struggles and like injustices of racism so i felt really like emotionally attached to star and her family they were really funny but like they're they were just such a strong family and i love just following star and seeing her find her voice and her identity it was really interesting to see her kind of caught between like two worlds her white friends and then her black friends and family also just the trauma that she went through like she went through so much it's heartbreaking to think like there's real people who have dealt with this and who are continuing to deal with this and these things are still happening so yeah i'm gonna read a couple quotes here that were really powerful so sometimes you can do everything right and things will still go wrong the key is to never stop doing right what's the point of having a voice if you're going to be silent in those moments you shouldn't be and your voices matter your dreams matter your lives matter be the roses that grow in the concrete. I couldn't recommend this one enough. It's something I feel like everyone, regardless of your background, needs to read and be aware of. It was a really, really powerful book that I really loved. Okay, last book. I read The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth. I listened to this one as well. This is a domestic thriller. It's about a married couple, Pippa and Gabe, who live on this, like, edge of a cliff basically oh yeah this was my um body of water prompt so they live like on this coastal town on the edge of a cliff and basically where they live it's like this um i don't know what to do with my hands Ugh. okay <laughs> i'm just gonna hold this first a lot of people go to this edge of the cliff to commit suicide and her husband gabe is known to go out and like convince them not to and he's done he's been successful with like the last i don't know eight to ten people or whatever until one day they see that this woman is on the edge of the cliff and he is not successful and in fact it looks like he pushed her or didn't try to help her or like he something happened there and now it's this murder investigation just like a domestic family drama it's a thriller but to me it's not like the edge of on the edge of your seat kind of thriller more like domestic thriller basically this was definitely an enjoyable like quick easy read it wasn't like a top new favorite thriller it was kind of just like middle of the road but i did enjoy it and i read it pretty fast so it has like two main female perspectives with two timelines past and present and then they kind of like converge on each other by the end of the book really short chapters so you can kind of get through it fast i loved like spooky cliffside setting it had really good like atmosphere it deals with a lot with like mental health themes so just be aware of that like depression bipolar disorder suicide obviously and then like ADHD just yeah a lot of mental health themes this one is kind of one of those books where like none of the characters are super likable and you don't really know who's like good or bad or like involved in the murder I wasn't like super surprised by the big reveal at the end there were some twists but like not anything like mind-blowing I kind of like zoned out a little bit which might just be me so it wasn't like super gripping at all times but it was pretty entertaining it addressed the dangers of like codependent relationships the main character really is like kind of obsessed with her husband and like overlooks a lot of things and so here's some quotes about that that I thought were really good yes he could hurt me but he was the only one who could make me fly and I'd come to accept I was powerless in this. I couldn't help him, but could I leave him? It felt impossible. He was the air I breathed. As difficult as life could be with him, it had to be better than life without him, didn't it? So I feel like it did a good job of kind of showing the struggle of being in a relationship like that, where you feel like it's better to stay in it than get out of it. But at the end, I'm not gonna spoil it. Never mind. <laughs> but yeah, this was an overall enjoyable read. Like I said, not a top new fave, but not bad either so yeah that is it for my wrap up 
I had a pretty good month and I'm excited to just kind of keep this momentum going. So I would love to hear what you read in February, what your favorite books were. If you have any recommendations based off of the books I really liked, that is it for now. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.